Uh, where did this cold weather come from? Just bizarre. I am actually wearing long pants. I'm not going to have the camera come down to capture that. You're just going to have to trust me. In our series that we're uh, currently in, in the month of November, the great ones, we're looking at choices. People in the Bible, uh, males, females who made choices. Some of those choices were really good choices and some of them were not so much. Uh, sort of captures the essence of our life. Uh, we are looking at the character of Lot uh, this week, and we learned about him in Genesis chapter 13. So if you want to turn there in your Bibles, just want to take a little bit of a different look at Lot today and the subject of choices. So I'm going to look at Genesis 13, and I'm going to read a few verses starting in verse 10. So again, we're looking at the, uh, the great ones, certain choices that people in the Bible have made, and this choice by Lot is really a matter of him looking up. And we talked about on Sunday, we compared Lot and his uncle Abraham in their looking up. And we simply said, uh, Abraham looked all the way up. He looked to God when he made his choices most of his life. Lot looked up, but he only looked up to the horizon. He looked up to what he could control, what he could be in charge of, what he wanted. And there's really no evidence that he really was looking up to God for many of his decisions. The interesting thing is the Bible calls both of these men righteous men, which means they had faith in God, but they're at opposite ends, polar extremes, if you will, of uh, uh, the line of uh, decision making. One looked all the way to God, the other did not. So we're looking at this character named Lot. It says in verse 10, Lot looked around and saw the whole plain of the Jordan River toward Zor, which was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. Just verse 10 is what we're looking at. Um, Abraham had given Lot a choice, gave his nephew a choice. There was some conflict between them. Uh, they both were very prosperous. They had large herds. Um, the workers for these two men were bickering back and forth. So to quit the bickering and to be, maintain a good testimony, Abraham simply said to his nephew, uh, choose the portion of the land you want and it's yours. The interesting thing is that God never promised the land to Lot. He promised it all to Abraham. And it really shows tremendous grace uh, and tremendous um, humility on the part of Abraham to take what God had promised him and be able to offer it uh, to his nephew Lot. Lot didn't even say thank you. Uh, Lot simply looked for the most prosperous area and he took it all. He didn't say to his uncle, hey, would you like part of this? Uh, keep part of it for yourself. No, he took it all. So really, it's, it's, we're looking at two different types of people who would call themselves Christians person who looks all the way up to God, makes their decisions based on what God wants them to do, and somebody who wants to manage life and please themselves. So when we are talking about this whole idea of choices, I had mentioned that the average American uh, adult makes some 35,000 choices a day. Now, who does these surveys and these polls? I don't know. But I've seen a figure similar to that in many, many different uh, articles. About 30, 35, 40,000 decisions uh, based on your area of responsibility and maturity. Some people make more, some less. 35,000 decisions a day. Now, it doesn't mean you're conscious of every one of those, but it's like when you get up in the morning, you go to put clothes on, you make a decision, you make a choice, and it's not that you necessarily analyze it. Sometimes it's intuitive, sometimes it's feeling based, other times it's very conscious. So in making decisions, 35,000, how do you even assess those? Uh, some we might call minor uh, decisions or choices. Others are truly major choices. And the one thing I've tried to point out in the series is that all of our choices, small or large, have consequences. And sometimes those consequences uh, continue for a really long time and have major impact. If you can think of standing by a very still pond and taking a pebble and throwing it out into the middle and you see the ripples go out, that choice of throwing the pebble into the water has consequences and that's the ripples and most of us could think of a tsunami wave at that point. 
Um, some are very destructive uh, in terms of our choices and consequences. We could think of dominoes standing on end in a, in a whole line of these. You push one, just one, and if they're lined up properly, one will impact the one next to it and the one next to it, and you could send off a thousand or, or thousands of dominoes uh, with that choice, one single choice. So if we think about all of our choices as having some sort of an impact, the impact could be small, could be great. What I'm gonna talk about today is just some categories. Would, uh, now this is again, personal preference. I'm gonna try to identify six categories of choices that are really important in our life. These choices matter because they impact you, but all of our choices make choices for other people. They really do affect other people. So if you can think of your hand, the palm being the first choice, the main choice that determines uh, the quality of our life, the eternity of our life, and really the impact of our life upon others. And five other related categories of choices. Uh, you could trace your hand, draw a hand, or just list one through six. But this will help you just maybe think about your life your destiny, your future, how we interrelate with other people, how we um, talk with them, how we plan our day. If we think of these areas of choices, sometimes we will live better lives, but we can surely help other people. The first choice right in the middle is, and all of these, of course, are going to start with the same letter, is the word Christ. What will you do with this man, Jesus, who is said to be the Christ or the Messiah, the Anointed One? Um, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us that there's only one name whereby a person can be saved, where a person can be made righteous with God in today's world, and that's Jesus. We have to have a personal relationship with him. Now, Abraham had that relationship with God by faith. And uh, Lot, apparently, based on what the Bible says, he was a righteous man. He, too, had faith in God. But what they did with that faith in God was really uh, different. Uh, Abraham was a man who walked with God, who worshipped uh, God. He built several altars where he would connect with the Lord and, and show his children and family the importance of God. He worked for the Lord. He was a witness for the Lord. He actually warred, if you want to stay with W. Uh, he stood up for God in the face of evil. Christ was the center point of his life. He was an afterthought for a lot. We have to decide if we're going to put our faith in Jesus as our Savior, are we also putting our faith in Jesus as our Lord? Because the Bible over and over and over talks about Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, not just Savior. Savior means this, I want fire insurance so I don't, ha so I don't go to hell. I want forgiveness of my sins. Lord means, Lord is more, is bigger. It's all encompassing. Lord means he is my boss. He is my CEO. Uh, he is the owner of my life. And because of that, he is my savior. A lot of people just want fire insurance. I think that's what Lot wanted. He did have some degree of faith in God, but, but he wasn't willing to give all of his life to the Lord. He still wanted to be in control. So we have to decide in our life, is Jesus going to be Lord and Savior or just Savior? You can't make Jesus Lord and not your Savior, but you can make Jesus your Savior and be resistant to his Lordship in your life. So Christ has to be the center point of our life. We have to make a decision, and it's not a one-time decision. I think that's what Lot did. He probably put his faith in God at some point. But then he tried to manage life without God's involvement on a daily basis. Abraham, on the other hand, followed God every day of his life for the most part. It wasn't perfect, but for the most part, he was called a friend of God, which meant he walked with the Lord and made him the um, center of all that he did. So Christ, now you could go to another digit and simply write down the word character. Uh, when we think about choices, every day you and I have a choice on what kind of person we're going to be, what kind of character. Now we saw here in verse 10 that Lot's character was determined by pleasure. It was determined by his quest for prestige and power and popularity. He continually moved into the realm of the wicked, if you will, Sodom and Gomorrah, 
Abraham stayed removed from that. His character was such, if I'm going to have Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then my decisions, my daily decisions are going to be based upon how I can honor him and please him. Lot was pretty much all about himself. Every day we make decisions on our character, the type of person we're going to be, and we either move closer to the world or we stay uh, in the world but remove from its, um, if you will, tentacles, trying to pull us into its lifestyle, into its way of thinking, uh, into being a, uh, living on our emotions. Abraham determined his character based upon the fact that Jesus was his Lord and his Savior, and he was going to use Jesus as his role model. Another word that you could use, this, the third word, is companions. Companions. Uh, every day we determine who we're going to be with, who, we're, who our friends are going to be. Now, you normally can't choose your family outside of if you're getting married, you get to choose a spouse. You don't even really, for the most part, get to choose your own biological children. They're just a product of the two of you. But in terms of the people who are going to exert influence into your life, the companions that you will walk with, we have choices. And those choices determine uh, your reputation. They determine your habits, your way of thinking. The Bible talks very uh, a whole lot about the subject of your companions. I'm going to turn to the book of Proverbs here and read you a passage from there. And you could write this down. Proverbs 13 and verse 20, I believe it is. And here's what it says. Uh, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Every day we make a decision on who we're going to uh, uh, be intimate with, who we're going to be uh, vulnerable to. And if you make the wrong choices, many of us have been there, uh, sometimes that haunts us. Uh, people, if, if once they have an inroad into your life, if they're not people who love and worship God, they can manipulate you. They can use you. They can, we would use the term, they can burn you. We have to be careful of who we open our lives up to. And the Bible says that we as uh, Christians are to be very careful. We're not to have intimate relationships with people who don't share our values, who don't uh, share our beliefs. Lost people and uh, Christian people, have to, Christians have to be very careful about business relationships, definitely not dating or mating, marrying people who are from a different philosophy, different belief system than that of God. So we've looked at Christ in the center, we've looked at character, we've looked at companions, and now here's another one, what career are you going to choose? That's a huge uh, area of choices. Uh, so many decisions go into that. But when I think of career, why do I do what I'm doing? Three things came to mind. Number one, I wanted to honor God with my life. Now, it wouldn't matter if you're washing cars. If your desire is to honor God, God will recognize your heart decision and he'll give you peace about your career. I knew that was number one in my life. I wanted to honor God. Number two is I also wanted to hunt, if you will. I want to honor God. Number two, I wanted to hunt for personal joy and significance, satisfaction and significance, if you want. I wanted to be happy. I didn't just want to earn a paycheck. Uh, statistics tell us in America that 83% of people are dissatisfied with their job. They don't get hardly any joy from their job, and yet they make entire careers out of it. Why? For a dollar for the sake of retirement, for benefits. And they're miserable people. And that misery then doesn't just affect you. It affects the family that you come home to. It affects all those people around you. They don't see the joy of the Lord. They see you complaining and whining and griping. It's far better to have a less paying job, but to be happier and feel that uh, you're in God's will than it is just to uh, be um, have have like a ball and chain around you that you have to drag every day and be miserable. So, in determining career for me, it's always been honoring God, hunt for personal satisfaction and significance. And then the third thing is have an opportunity to help others. 
And that may mean that you're in a position where you can witness to people. It could be in a situation where you choose a career that may pay well and you're happy there and you feel it honors God. And the reason you're there and not somewhere else because you, the Lord provides an income for you where you can help your family. But then more than that, you can reach outside of your family and bless others with what God has blessed you with. So when you make a career choice, think about that. Are you honoring God? Is it going to meet that uh, need, that hunt for satisfaction and significance? And then are, does it provide you with the benefits and the resources where you can actually help somebody else, meaning starting with your family and then moving out, helping in your local church by being able to financially give and then help people in your community. So now we've looked at four things, okay? We've looked at Christ in the center. We've looked at character. We've looked at companions. We looked at career. The fifth one that we're going to look at is this area of choices. The choices that we make, are they going to help you to create a better world, a better culture? Many of our choices don't contribute much to the good of mankind. They, they're, we actually mooch off mankind many times. I've heard people say, well, I don't want to work because I get more money from welfare or from unemployment. How is that helping to make our world, our culture, our community a better place? When we make decisions, they need to be made in light of the world around us. And that could be your community, that could be your county, that could be your state. But we need to impact culture. And rather than just exist, rather than then some people might function almost like a sponge soaking up everything. We need to give back. We need to create a, a culture that honors God, a culture that is better uh, because we have been there. So oftentimes we have decisions in that regard. What will we do with our time and our energy? And are you doing anything to help somebody else? Are you doing anything to create an environment that is God-honoring and that is better because of your existence? Lastly is this, and I, I don't know that we always think about this. It's another C word, right? The word care. The decisions we make to care for ourselves, and that's all-encompassing. The decisions that we make considering our spiritual life, our mental, our emotional, our physical life. Now, as I am moving upwards in terms of numbers for my birthday, my goal um, revolves around the number 70 because that will take place in March. Um, I'm working on my push-ups right now, just physically, and several other exercises where the number 70 is going to enter into it. I could just be a slug and sit in a chair and eat potato chips, and unfortunately, I do choose to do that at times. But I'm trying to be proactive here. I'm trying to care for myself, because if I let my body fall apart or my mind or my emotions, what good am I to you? What good am I to God's work? So we have to learn to care for ourselves. And every day we make many, many decisions to either sit in a chair or get up and go for a walk, to eat healthy or go for the junk food. Lots of decisions. I think I mentioned earlier, we make uh, in another message nearly 230 decisions a day just regarding what we're going to eat. And a lot of those are not healthy. So just some thoughts from me to you based upon Lot and his making of choices, Abraham making of choices. I looked at life in general and said there's six key um, categories of choices. And if we think about those six, Christ is in the center. Then there's our personal character. Then there's the companions that we have in life. Um, and then there's our career. And then there's uh, making the world a better place, creating a, a better world using our life, making decisions there, and ultimately caring for ourselves. If we're more conscious of these categories and Christ is the center, we're strong. Think of a fist. We're strong. We're powerful. Um, if we don't make decisions, somebody else will make decisions for you. To not make a decision is to make a decision. We want to be more like Abraham, look up to God, and less like Lot, look at our comfort, look at what we can manage, look at what's easy. 
It, it takes some decision making to have a powerful life for the Lord. I pray that this week you'll continue to make good decisions and think about these areas. All right. God bless you. Praying for all of you. See you. Bye.